All right, <clears throat> Calc 2 students, well, welcome to hyperbolic functions. All right, very interesting topic. All right, so we're going to look at what we mean by hyperbolic functions. And when you've taken trigonometry, you learn really about uh, a, a unit circle. So you've learned about circular definitions of trigonometric functions. Well, that's based on a circle. Well, we can also have based on a unit hyperbola. Okay, just a quick review of a couple of things about calculus. So this is a unit circle. The equation of a unit circle would be x squared plus y squared equals 1. And remember, the radius just ends up being equal to 1. Okay, so there's three ways to look at this region here. This is an arc, and uh, you can think of this in, two, in three ways. Okay, this could be thought of as the angle in radians. That's what you're most familiar with. And you could also think of this as the arc length, right? That's what T is. And you can think of it as twice the area of that sector. That would be the shaded region. So to show this, it's actually pretty simple. Um, when you're dealing with a arc length, uh, it goes like this. The formula that you would have learned for the area of, uh, for an arc length is S equals R theta. Okay, well, what we're doing here is we're just letting T using that variable instead of theta for the radian measure of that angle. We already know the unit circle has a radius of 1, so notice we get S equals T. So what that means is the angle in radians is the same as the arc length, and that's the definition of a radian anyway, is one radian would be the angle that has an equal arc length. Then the next thing is uh, you can also think of T as twice the area of the sector. So you learned uh, probably in a trig class the area of a sector is one-half R squared theta. Again, we're going to let theta be T radians. We're talking about a unit circle, so we get this. All right. So what would happen on this then is you would just get uh, area is one-half T. Then you could multiply both sides by 2. And then you get this other relation. Okay, so notice what you get is that uh, ang that radian measure is just twice the area of that sector. Okay, so those are the three ways to interpret that in a unit circle. Well, the idea is when we develop hyperbolic trigonometric functions, is we're talking about a hyperbola. So the a hyperbola is x squared minus y squared equals 1. And we're just looking at this part of the hyperbola. The hyperbola, you'd have another portion over here that's symmetric across the y-axis. So we're looking at this point right here. So what we do is we define this. Uh, and remember in a unit circle that what you learned, of course, is the, the x value is the cosine and the y value is the sine. So it's the same way in a hyperbola the x value is what we call the hyperbolic cosine, and the y value is what we call the hyperbolic sine. All right? We usually just call that the cosh of t and the cinch of t. All right? So what happens is the same thing happens. You would end up getting, you can think of, um, you could interpret this basically the same way. You can think of t as just being the radian measure, or you can think of it as being twice the area of that sector. So T is going to be twice the area of that sector for basically the same reason that it would on a unit circle then, all right? So as you're going through the unit hyperbola, uh, what you're doing on this is the hyperbolic cosine uh, would be the X value of this point, and then the hyperbolic sine would be the Y value on that. And then T is twice the area of the hyperbolic sector. Okay, uh, I'm going to show show a couple of things on this applet. This is a GeoGebra applet. And just to kind of begin to give you sort of an idea of, uh, of what, it, what, these, what the graphs look like, essentially. So I'm going to just sort of start this, try to get this thing kind of put in at zero here. And I, this is a pretty good way to demonstrate this. And I'll, I'll post this link because it's a pretty good way to... To, to try to visualize what's going on in the problem. So I'm going to start this at zero. Now, that would be 
at the angle would be in radians, that would be zero radians, okay? Well, the hyperbolic cosine is what you're doing is you're plotting the x value. So right now, if the radian measure is zero, then the x value on the hyperbola is one, so we plot one, okay? And I'm just sort of gonna move through this a little bit, and it's gonna trace out the graph of the hyperbolic cosine. Now, if I get to one radian, so now you're at one radian on the hyperbolic, um, uh, on the hyperbola, the idea is you're doing the x value. So right now, you're at one radian, all right? So what that would mean then is, um, here's the point that's on the hyperbolic cosine. Uh, what you wanna notice on this is you're here on the, um, on the hyperbola, so that x value is a little is between one and two. So notice it's graphing that x value, and so forth. You got to kind of scroll through this a couple times to get a sense of what's going on. Now we're at 2.05 radians. Okay, so this is the point on the graph of the hyperbolic cosine. Okay, that's equivalent to the x value on the hyperbola. So see that's close to four. Notice that it's plotting out that value of four like that. Then I'll scroll it out one more time. We um, we get up to about 2.55, same thing. Okay, this is 2.55 radians. This is the point on the graph of the hyperbolic cosine. That turns out to be the same as the X value on the hyperbola, which is about 6.5, so it's plotting that. So basically, you know, it kind of goes like this. Well, the graph of the hyperbolic cosine, what it's doing is it's really just tracing out the X values that are on the hyperbola. So the graph of the hyperbolic cosine kind of resembles this, kind of looks like a parabola, it's not. It's actually what we call a catenary curve. So it goes like that, All right? I'm gonna do this and I'll do the same thing for the hyperbolic sine. Sometimes the hyperbolic sine may be a little bit easier to see. So right now you're at zero radians, okay? So what the hyperbolic sign is, is it's plotting the Y value. So if, if you're at A equals zero, zero radians are at this point on the hyperbola and its Y value is zero. Okay, so we plot that. Now I'll move out to one radian. At one radian, okay, you're here, okay? Well, let's see, that's the one radian right there. But what you're doing is you're plotting the y value on the hyperbola. So as I trace through this, I want you to notice that these things are just lining up. Okay, so we're for at 1.65 radians. We're actually at this point on the hyperbola, so we plot its y value. To me, the sign's a little a little bit easier to see. All it's doing is it's plotting the, the y value on the hyperbola. So these things are gonna be the same height so as we scroll through this, and see now we get into the negative radians and so forth. Again, all it's doing is, is you're at negative 2.4 radians. That's the same as the Y value on that hyperbola. Okay, it's a little harder to follow than a circle is. I'll post that link, and if you kind of go through and look at that a little bit, it'll help you begin to make sense of, of how that relates to the hyperbola, hopefully, okay? So what we're going to do a lot in here is a lot of the calculus of this, and I'm not going to go through all of the derivation. So on the next page, um, I'm going to give you the basic definitions. I'm not going to go through the derivation of that, but these are kind of the key things that you want to make sure that you know. The hyperbolic cosine is the X value on a point on the hyperbola, and it's a unit hyperbola, X squared minus Y squared equals 1. You may recall um, what you usually learn in um, like college algebra, pre-calculus maybe, is a hyperbola looks like that. Okay, that's the general equation of a hyperbola centered at zero, zero. Okay, so uh, the hyperbolic sign is the y value on the same hyperbola, x squared minus y squared equals one. So what happens on this then is these are the definitions. I'm not going to go through the derivation of these. So the hyperbolic cosine ends up giving you this expression, and you want to know this expression right here. This is something that you want to know. 
And uh, the hyperbolic sine is this expression, e to the t minus e to the negative t over 2. So you want to know that relationship right there. I'm not going to go through the derivation of that. That is a good thing to maybe investigate and look at online. And then I think the textbook shows that as well. But I'm going to show you this real quick. Um, since I went ahead and showed you what the graph looks like on that GeoGebra applet, so I'm just going to put this in. I'm going to put in um, e, e to the x. I'm going to put in the hyperbolic cosine and just sort of show you how this goes then. So I put in e to the x plus uh, e to the negative x and put that all over 2. So that's really the definition of uh, the hyperbolic cosine. So if I was to do this in a standard window, well, you'll get that same kind of graph that we, that we saw on that GeoGebra applet, all right? And if you look at your table of values, technically what's happening is this is radians right here. So this is like at one radian, the X value on the hyperbola is 1.5. At two radians, the x value on the hyperbola is 3.7, and so forth. You can even get into negative radians, and see there's that symmetry. So if you're at negative one radian, then you end up being at this x value on the, hy on the uh, hyperbola. All right, so that's how that goes. And if I wanted to do change this to a sine, the hyperbolic cosine, the only difference is that's a minus. So if I graph this then that's what the graph of the hyperbolic sine looks like is like that, okay? All right, so um, that you want to know the, the, how these things relate to, to the uh, Euler number E. So this is what we would call the cosh of X, and then this is what we would call the cinch of X, okay? The cinch of X is a cinch, ha ha. All right, so here's kind of what we, what we get here. These are your basic definitions. You want to know these. The rest of these you can actually easily figure out. Okay, so as far as, uh, and I'll kind of try to go through as I'm teaching this to tell you what I expect you to know and what I would kind of give you. I want you to know these things right there because that's real fundamental. You want to know that, okay? The rest of these you don't really have to know. Um, they, uh, you can derive these real easily. So the tanch, we call that the hyperbolic tanch. It's the cinch over the cosh. That's the same as it is, remember the identity in, in trig is the tangent is the sine over the cosine. Hyperbolic cotangent, we call the cotch. That always sounds funny to me. So we get this. And then the hyperbolic secant, the seach, is one over cosine. And then the hyperbolic cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay, So what you would really want to know is you would want to know this part of this and this part of this. And then you can derive this part. So this part right here, you should be able to just kind of quickly derive anytime you need that then. Okay, But the most important thing is to know these definitions right there. Just the cosh and the cinch. And if you know that, you can figure everything else out then, see. Okay? So on the next page, what I'll do is we're going to do some, a couple of simple derivations here, and uh, and then we'll do end up kind of going through and doing um, a proof or two here. So let's do let's just, we want to do the tangent cotch, okay? So let's go ahead and do this der derivation here. So the tanch of x is the cinch of x over the cosh of x. You can pretty much do this one in your head. The cinch is, by definition, e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. And then the cosh is, by definition, e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2 like that. Okay, well, what happens is the 2s would just divide out. So what you would end up with is you would end up with e to the x minus e to the negative x over e to the x plus e to the negative x. Okay, so that's what the hyperbolic tangent is. And that's why I wouldn't really give you this formula because it's so easy to figure out. Okay, you can even do that in your head. The hyperbolic cotangent, the cotch, goes like this. Well, that's just the reciprocal of this. So you can even see, once you know this, 
then you can just reciprocate this. But basically, it would go like this. You would do the, the kosh over the cinch, and um, like that. And then see, that would be the kosh would be e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. The cinch would be e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. The twos would divide out, so you would end up getting the conclusion that the hyperbolic cotangent is e to the x plus e to the negative x over e to the x minus e to the negative x. Okay, like that. All right, so that's how that would go when you put that together then. All right, so that's the derivation. Okay, so on the next page, uh, I'm going to just do two more derivations. We want to derive the seach and the coseach. Okay, so this goes like this. Uh, on the next page, you do this, and you'll do some derivations in your homework a little bit then. So if you want to do the seach of x, well, that's 1 over the cosh of x. So that would be 1 over the hyperbolic cosine's definition is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. So all you're doing is you're just simply doing a reciprocal there. So, so you can do this in your head. Uh, when you do 1 divided by a fraction, well, that's just uh, 1 times a over 1. So it's just the reciprocal of this thing. So you get 2 over e to the x plus e to the negative x. Okay, so that's how you get that. The hyperbolic uh, cosecant or, is done the same way. So if we do the hyperbolic cosecant, that would be 1 over the cinch. So therefore, that would be 1 over e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. So what you just want to remember that the only difference between the cinch and the cosh is that. And then you can do the reciprocal to get 2 over e to the x minus e to the negative x. So that's what the hyperbolic cosecant is then. So see, it's real easy to derive those um, um, formulas for the tanch, koch, seach, and coseach based on what you know about the, de uh, the definition of the kosh and the cinch. Okay, that's the idea. Okay. okay, the next thing is this is a fundamental identity, and what you want to remember is just kind of to relate this to trig. Remember in trig, you learned this fundamental identity. We call that the Pythagorean identity in trigonometry. It goes like that. And really all this is, is remember the sign in a unit circle, the sign is the y value. So you get y squared plus, and then the cosine in a unit circle is the x value. So what do you do? You just get the, that's the equation of the unit circle right there. <clears throat> so that's the fundamental relationship in uh, circular trigonometry. In uh, hyperbolic trigonometry, it goes like this. And there's a couple of ways to do this. You could reason this out like this. Uh, if you wanted to, you could think of uh, the cosh. I'm not, I'm not going to prove it this way, but you can think of it this way. Is um, the, hype, the, about the definition of a hyperbolic cosine, that's really just the x value. And the uh, hyperbolic sign, I need to put the h there. It would just be the y value. So what you get is a hyperbola. Now, to derive this and prove this, I'm not going to do it that way. That's just kind of a simple way to think of that. But what we're going to do is we're going to do this. So we're going to start off, I'm just going to write down the cosh squared x minus the cinch squared x. And then we'll just apply the definitions. Okay, so the hyperbolic cosines definition is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2, and then we're going to square that, and then the hyperbolic sine is e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2, and then I'm going to square that, okay, and then we're going to work this out and kind of see what, if we get a 1 out of this, okay, and there's some things you can do in your head on this, so I'm just going to write this as e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2, and then 2 to the second would be 4, and then over here, I'll do the same thing. I'll have e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2, and then 2 to the second would be 4. So I'll start off kind of like that, 
And then you can foil these out, or you can apply the shortcut. I want to just sort of remind students how to do this. If you're in Calc 2, you want to know how to do the shortcut in pretty much any situation that comes up. So the shortcut is you square this term, and then you square this term. <clears throat> then you multiply together those two terms, and then you double it. So that's how you get this in your head. When you do this, you multiply exponents. See, that's really e to the x times e to the x, which is e to the 2x. So that would be e to the 2x. This would be plus 2e to the 0, because you're adding those exponents because you're multiplying. And then this would be e to the negative 2x, like that. So actually, you would get e to the 2x, and then e to the 0 is 1, so you would get this. Okay, and you want to be able to just kind of do that quickly and efficiently in your head then. All right, so I'm going to skip down to this then. So when we do this in our head, this would be e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the negative 2x all over 4. And then we do the same thing with the next thing here. Okay, so I'll do the same thing here e to the x squared, uh, e to the x when you square it would be e to the 2x. Same thing would happen here, you would just get a 2, and then when you square this term, you get a positive e to the negative 2x like that. If you don't like doing that in your head like that, you can write it out twice and foil it, and sometimes students just do a better job that way, so you can do that if you want to. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collect this, put this all together in one fraction. So I would have e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the negative 2x. And this whole thing's over 4. And remember what you're doing is you're subtracting this entire quantity. So it would be minus e to the 2x plus 2 minus e to the negative 2x like that. So we just got some real basic algebra going on here. And what's going to happen is you're going to see those things uh, go away. Those things here go away. So what do you get? You get 2 plus 2 is 4 over 4 is equal to 1. So that's how you prove that fundamental identity in hyperbolic trigonometry. But you can quickly think of it this way, just like you can quickly think of the circular definition that way. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, that's what I wanted to show on that. And um, so this is your fundamental identity. Again, just kind of relate this to the hyperbola that it's defined on. Okay. And then that's a quick way to remember that. Okay. All right. So now on this next page, what we're going to begin to look at is some hyperbolic identities. When you studied trig, well, there was all kinds of identities you learned. Well, there's all kinds of identities for hyperbolic trigonometry also. So this is a list of these. Uh, most of these kind of things, there would be some of these that I would give you. Some of, them, some of them I'd expect you to just know. This is kind of the basic one that I want you to know. A lot of these other things are fairly easy to derive with the basic definitions. And that's what I want to stress in this section is, if you know the definition of the hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, you can figure just about everything out, OK? And I don't remember a lot of these things. Um, I forget them. So what I'm going to do is either look them up or I'm going to quickly derive them, OK? And I like to just sort of derive things when I need to. <clears throat> OK. so. We're going to do some derivations. I'm not going to do all of these, so I'm just going to pick out uh, a few of these here. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's derive, um, let's start by deriving this thing first. Okay, let's go ahead and just do this. Okay, now I think this is important to know. Um, so the, a, a real easy way to derive this is to just write down the fundamental identity. Okay, because you want to know that. I, I won't give you that because that's such a fundamental thing to know. Well, it turns out what I can do on this is 
I can divide both sides of this equation by the hyperbolic cosine squared. I show students in trig how to get the Pythagorean identities the same way. You know, I kind of forget these. It's easy to forget these, but it's easy to derive them. So what you get is you end up getting this. Well, that would be 1, so that's where that 1 comes from. The cinch over the cosh is the tench, so that would be tench squared of x. That's where that comes from. And then 1 over the cosh is the seach. So see, that relates exactly the same way it does in, uh, in trigonometry, okay, when you're dealing with um, uh, a unit circle instead of a hyperbola. So the second one let's do is let's do this, okay? Well, not that one. Let's do let's do this one because you want to know how to quickly and efficiently derive these two right here. So let's go ahead and do this one. So again, what I would do is I would start the same way. I would write down the fundamental property here. And then what I would do is I would just divide this time instead of dividing by the hyperbolic cosh. Let's divide by the hyperbolic cinch squared and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like what's going to happen here is a cosh over a cinch is what? That's a seach squared. <laughs> These words sound so funny to me. That's a 1. And then what's 1 over a cinch? That's a coseach. Okay, so it goes like that. So see, that is the derivation of that, um, is we've got this then. Oh, I did the wrong thing there. I wasn't paying attention. <clears throat> I think I wrote down the wrong thing. So what, did it, what is a cosh over a cinch? A cosh over a cinch is a cotch. <laughs> so it's a hyperbolic cotangent. So there's your identity. Sorry about that. Okay. So that's how you do that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I think we'll do, uh, let's do this derivation and let's do this derivation. Okay. And just kind of look at how those go. All right. So let's look at the uh, cosh of 2x. <clears throat> so to begin with, let's uh, let's just write down the definition of the hyperbolic cosine is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. Now what we're going to derive is the hyperbolic cosine of 2x. So it would turn out that if I'm doing the hyperbolic cosine of 2x, all that's going to do is it's going to replace those x's with two x's then, okay? So what you would end up having is e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x over 2, like that, and then we'll just kind of see what happens on this then, all right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at this uh, kind of like this then. So uh, we know that um, the hyperbolic cosine squared of x, um, and, and you can kind of think of this like this. Let me just kind of show you what my thought process is on this. We can kind of divide this up like this. So we can write this actually as e to the x, plus e to the negative x over 2 to the second. And then we could write this as uh, e to the uh, x minus e to the negative x all over 2 squared. Those things are going to be the same, and I'll explain kind of where I'm, where I'm getting that from, is I'm getting that from... Uh, the cosh squared of x plus the, plus the cinch squared of x, okay? So these things turn out to be the same thing, all right? So that right there would be the cosh squared of x. This would be the cinch squared of x like that, okay? So if I multiplied all this stuff out right here, it would be mathematically equivalent to this. So I'm trying to show you is if you did all this algebra here, it would be the same thing as this. It's kind of hard to see that in your head, but it is, okay? So now what I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to multiply all this stuff out then, 
and um, then I'll end up getting getting this then. Okay, uh, so hold on just a second. Okay, so the thing that I, that we're trying to do on this is we're trying to prove that this is equal to the cosh squared of x plus the cinch squared of x. So that's what we're trying to prove. So that's the reason that I'm going ahead, and I probably should have wrote this right here, the cosh squared of x plus the cinch squared of x would be equal to this. Now what we're hoping is when we work this out that we end up with the cosh of 2x. So I'm kind of working this from this side to that side. I just want to clarify what I'm what I'm doing there then. All right, so I kind of wanted to write this out and establish this connection first, because what we're hoping is when we multiply all this stuff out that we get this. We get this part right here, and once we get this, then we'll know that's equal to the cosh of 2x. So I'm just kind of working with the right side of the identity to prove the left side of the identity. Okay, so we'll do this in our head. So I'm going to square this. That would be e to the 2x. And then it would be double e to the x times e to the negative x. Square the last term, you would get e to the negative 2x. I did that previously. Square a 2, you get a 4. Okay, you want to try to be able to do this in your head. e to the x, when you square it, is e to the 2x. Then you multiply the two terms together and double. So that's the shortcut. And then you would get here, you're squaring a negative, so you get a positive. That would be e to the negative 2x, and that would be over 4 like that. Okay, so what happens then, we're just going to put a bunch of these like terms together, and you want to remember that this is e to the 0. So this piece right here becomes 1, that piece right there becomes 1. So when we put this all together in a common denominator, let's see what happens. Okay. So what we'll end up getting here then is we'll end up getting e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the negative 2x. And then all this stuff here would be plus e to the 2x uh, minus 2 plus e to the negative 2x like that. Then that would be all over 4. Okay, so we get this. All right, so now what we have is we have like terms. These things go together. Uh, these things here go together. And then it looks like the twos, uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, so you can wipe that out. So what we get is two of these. There's 2e to the 2x. And then there's plus 2e to the negative 2x all over 4. Okay, now remember what we're trying to do is ultimately we're trying to show that this is equal to this. So we're hoping this is the same as this. Okay, so what can we do? We can factor a 2 out. So if you factor a 2 out, you would have 2 times e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x all over 4. That would divide out and give you this. Okay, and look at this. So what we end up getting is e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x over 2, which is this. So therefore, that's equal to the cosh of 2x. So that's how that thing gets simplified, or, or I'm sorry, proven, is like that. That's the derivation of that identity, okay? All right, so that's how that goes. I was going to do one other one here. That one takes a little bit of work, but it's not that hard. It's just basically starting with this side of the identity, applying the definition of the cosh and cinch, working out the algebra, and once you get to this point here, and then you got it. Okay, so that's how we're going to do that. All right, so I'm going to do the derivation of this now. So we're going to derive the identity that the cinch of x, of uh, 2x, is equal to 2 cinch x cosh x. Okay, and see that's very similar to what you have in um, in trig. In trig, and in, in circular trig, you have the identity sine 2x equals 2 sine x cosine x. See, and it's, all, it's, it's the same thing. It ends up being exactly the same thing on this. 
So a lot of these identities are very, very similar to what you learned in circular trig, but they may be off by, a, there may be a little nuance like a sign or something like that. So what I'm going to do on this then is uh, just kind of work this out like this. Well, let's start by just starting, we'll start with the cinch of 2x. Okay, well, the definition of the cinch of x is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. So that, that you have to know. So what this would be is the cinch of 2x would just be e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x all over 2. Okay, so we got that. Now what we're going to end up doing on this is we can just kind of break this thing up. And I think what happens on this is the simplest way to do this derivation now is to start with this side. To me, it's a little easier to go this way. So we just have 2 cinch x cosh of x. And let's just write this down and kind of make the connection here. So this would be 2 times the definition of the cinch is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. The definition of the cosh is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. And then let's multiply that out. And if we get this, so what we're kind of hoping is if we get this, then we've got this thing verified. So we, what we do, we just multiply this stuff out. Okay, what happens on this then is if you multiply this out, 2 times 2 would be 4. Or, you know, you could even do this. Like it's probably just as easy to do this. Now that I think of it, we could just go cross one of the twos out. So now we'd have that. That's easier. And see, this is a difference of two squares. So if you do that, if you do the FOIL, that would be e to the 2x. Notice that the inner term and the outer term are just going to cancel out. So that's really, really, that's just minus 1. And that's plus 1. So they will cancel out. And then you would have minus e to the negative 2x. Well, that's what that is. So that's equal to the cinch of 2x. Okay, and I'm trying to kind of do some of the foil and stuff a little bit more in your head. And as a Calc 2 student, you want to you want to get to where you do that kind of stuff in your head a little bit better. Okay, so that would be how those two things get derived. Um, and again, it's just all the definitions. So if you know the definition of cinch and cosh, then you can pretty much figure everything out. You really can. Okay. All right. So that's some derivations. Um, I'm going to work a little bit more with that on the, on the next page. Uh, this is the graphs that I've already shown you. You don't have to know the graphs. If you know the definition of the cinch and cost, you can graph those on the graphing calculator like I showed you earlier. Like, for instance, the cinch, you just put in the definition, and you've got your graph. Okay, the graph of a cinch is a cinch, right? Okay, so what we have is this is how these two graphs go. And this is what the domains would be on this and everything. The cosh is an even function. From pre-calculus or college algebra, what did you learn about the symmetry of an even function? Yeah, that's symmetric about, about the y-axis. Okay, that's what that is. Okay, and you can tell that that's symmetric about y. Then the same thing happened in circular trigonometry is uh, the cosine was an even function. Okay, the, um, the cinch is an odd function. What does that mean? That means it's symmetric about the origin. Okay, so that's origin symmetry. So that just means if you have a point here, then, that, then you could reflect over y and over x and get there. So that's how something is symmetric about the origin 0, 0, like that. Okay, it's something you may have to review a little bit. Okay, the domains on these things are all real numbers because basically what x represents is that it represents a, um, a radian measure, and it can be thought of as twice the hyperbolic sector, right? The range, you can tell by looking, the range of the cosine is 1 to infinity, and then the range of a cinch is all real numbers. Okay, so that's how those graphs go.
All right. So uh, to begin with, then, we want to just do a couple of derivations on here. And uh, I just want to derive that the cinch is odd and the cosh is even. Now, this is something you do in, in college algebra pre-calc. So I want to just remind you of a couple of things here. All right. So first of all, a function is even if uh, f of negative x is just equal to f of x for all x. All right. So that's how you would tell if something is an even function. All right. So let's start like this then. Let's work with showing that the cosine is an even function. So first of all, you would start off like this, all right? Well, and let me write the definition over at the side here. The hyperbolic cosine is equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Just writing that for reference, okay? So what we would start with is we would start with the hyperbolic cosine of negative x, <clears throat> okay? So what I'm going to do is replace all of these x's with negatives, with negative x. So if I do this, I would end up getting e to the negative x plus e to the negative negative x all over 2. So again, I'm just replacing that with negative x, and I'm replacing that with negative x, so I get this. So if I work this out, this is just e to the negative x. This becomes e to the x all over 2, okay? That's the same as this. See, I mean, if you just rearrange this and wrote it like this, well, that is the cosh of x. So what we showed on this, so we would say, therefore, the cosh of negative x is equal to the cosh of x for all x. And then we could say, therefore, the hyperbolic cosine is an even function. That's how you do that. And see, it's not hard to figure that stuff out if you know what the definition of an even function is, right? Okay, now let's review this. Okay, so we also learn in college algebra pre-calc that a function is odd if f of negative x equals negative f of x. So it gives you the opposite function value for all x. So the derivation of this is pretty similar, actually. So what you'd have here is, I'm for reference, I'm going to write down the cinch of x. Its definition is e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. Okay? So what we're going to do on this is the same kind of idea. Let's just start by formulating the cinch of negative x. All right? So what we're going to do again, what do you do with these x's? You replace them with negative x. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to have e to the negative x minus e to the negative negative x all over 2. And then we're going to simplify and see what comes out of this. So this would be e to the negative x minus e to the x all over 2. Okay, now if you compare this to this, they're reversed. They're backwards. So what you can do on this is you can factor out a negative 1 and flip this thing around. So you could write this as negative 1 times e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. Convince yourself of that. That's a fundamental thing that you do in algebra a lot. And these little fundamentals, you want to make sure that you never forget. Like if you have something like 2, two minus x, that's negative x minus 2. So I just flipped it around. So anyway, what you would get is you would get negative time. You just get a negative of e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2, right? That negative 1, I'm just writing it like that. So therefore, that would be a negative cinch of x. So what you would say is, therefore, we just showed that the cinch of negative x is equal to negative cinch of x for all x. And then, therefore, we would say the hyperbolic cinch is an odd function. Okay, now see, this type of thing you did like in pre-calc and college algebra, 
you're just applying that idea to a new type of function. So that's how you how you figure that out. So you can know either by knowing the graphs, whether they're even or odd, and knowing the symmetry, or you can quickly derive them this way. It's not hard to derive these, these two things if you know the technical definition of what an even and odd function is then. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so in this section, what I'm doing a lot is showing you how to derive a lot of stuff. All right, so now we'll get into the calculus a little bit here. So uh, this is going to be kind of the introduction to this. I haven't really done any calculus yet. I'm going to kind of get into that next here. So I'm doing this video in parts. This first part is going to be the introduction to hyperbolic trig functions and the identities. And then the next part of the video will be the calculus. Okay.